Hey there, and thanks for watching. So over the next few minutes, we're going to walk you through our STNL valuation model, custom GPT. So let's get started. Now you may have seen the video from a few weeks ago where we shared our first custom GPT financial model, our advanced mortgage amortization schedule. And that was a fairly simple model from our library of ACRE models. And we trained a custom GPT on that model so that you feed it inputs and it produces the file from our library auto built with your inputs as an output. Now that was a fairly simple model, a single worksheet and so I thought, let's try it now with a multi-worksheet model. And so I've done that now with the STNL valuation model by ACRE. You either uh, upload an offering memorandum to the custom GPT, or you give it inputs as it prompts you for those inputs over a seven-step process. And then it auto-populates the uh, assumptions in my single tenant net lease valuation model, a model that we shared uh, many years ago, and we've updated now dozens of times since that point, that either values or calculates the returns for a single tenant net lease investment opportunity. Uh, most retail, but also can handle really any single tenant scenario, office, industrial, and so forth. So the steps are quite simple to use this custom GPT. The first step is to have a plus teams or enterprise license for ChatGPT, at least as of May 2024, some paid version of ChatGPT is required to use custom GPTs. This custom GPT is part of the OpenAI GPT store, or they call it the GPT store, but custom GPTs do not cost anything to use if you have a paid membership for ChatGPT. Uh, you'll find it there. I'll also include a link to the custom GPT in the instructions. So to get started, I'll just simply prompt it to analyze this STNL investment. And it begins by asking us to either upload an offering memorandum from which to extract the details that it needs. And again, it will ask for those details over a seven step process, or it will, it says, would you prefer to manually provide the inputs? Now in our accelerator program, there is a case study amongst the 20 something case studies that we have in our program called 10,000 Fitness Way. And this is a hypothetical scenario where we build an acquisitions model for a building occupied by Bronze Gym. And we're going to use this OM to feed to the custom GPT to produce the model that we need. So I'm gonna close this. I'm just gonna drag and drop the OM into here and say, here is the OM for 10,000 Fitness Way. Next, what it's going to do is share with us the first step of inputs that it needs and read from the OM the inputs that it finds. So for instance, it assumes a retail property type. This is because it's a gym. Uh, the subtype is a gym or fitness. Uh, this isn't listed exactly in the sub property types, but we'll use other under retail. Okay, interesting. So it finds that this is a gym and fitness, but it does not find a fitness option as a sub property type within the model. Uh, it has a name, address, city, state, land size, net rentable area. These are all correct. And so then we can either proceed to the next section. You, you can click this button and we'll do that or we can actually prompt it to specifically proceed. But first let's say, help me understand is there are no other sub property type related to fitness. So it seems a little odd that this says there's no sub property type for fitness. Then it gives us the list of sub property types that the model includes. Bank, convenience, daycare, QSR, gas station, grocery. Sure enough, there is no other. Would you like to proceed with other? Yes, proceed with other and then continue to the next section. So it summarizes the first section, then it goes to section two, which is pricing and valuation. Uh, it needs an asking price, which it found from the OM. It needs a market cap rate, which it assumes from the OM. And then it asks for total replacement cost. This value is not provided in the OM. Please confirm and provide the total replacement cost if available. If not, we can proceed with the information we have. So it gives you either the option of, hey, we can include a replacement cost, and that's helpful on an acquisition scenario to understand if we are buying above or below replacement cost. So let's do this. Um, let's assume for replacement cost, 
uh, five dollars per square foot for land and uh, please recommend a cost to build so we got two acres of land at five dollars a square foot uh, that's about four hundred fifty thousand dollar land price uh, 435 so it did the math for us and then it recommends uh, let's see hundred and fifty dollars a square foot times 41 so uh, for for the building hard soft carry costs and so you get land cost plus building cost 435 plus the 6.2 million gives us a total replacement cost of whatever the mass 6.642 million let's proceed so it has what it needs for the second section. Now it goes to the third, analysis details and project investment. And so it's going to su suggest uh, we need to specify an analysis start date. Uh, it, we need to specify a general vacancy. Typically a percentage, if not specified, we can use a standard assumption of say 0% since it's, it's a single tenant property. That's pretty smart on its part. Uh, purchase price. Now where you might add a general vacancy if you have cons some concern around the credit quality of the tenant, where there's a real possibility that they vacate in the middle of the term and you provide what's effectively a contingency for vacancy. Here, we're not gonna do that. So let's just go, let's use 1-1-2025 for analysis start, 0% uh, general vacancy. I like 1% for acquisition fees, 1% for due diligence. Use your recommendation for other items. So it's, we'll, we'll go January 1st, 2025 for analysis start, no general vacancy, and then it recommends a 1% acquisition fee, 50 basis point due diligence cost. Then we go to step four. So there's a whole bunch of values, many that are not provided. Let's do this. What would you recommend for each of these inputs? Let's have it take a first crack, its best guess. So based on industry standards, assuming no other income, that's a fair assumption given it's single tenant. Uh, no other income growth, that's a fair assumption. Assuming 100%, since this is an absolute triple net lease, 100% tenant operating expense recovery, 100% CapEx, again, absolute triple net. Uh, they, they put down 355, 345 year one operating expense. That was actually pulled from the OM. No CapEx. Uh, expense growth of 2%. LTC, loan to purchase price or loan to cost of approximately 70%. On step four, let's assume a 6% interest rate and a 360 month ammo. Right, because it then proceeds to step five. And then it on step five, tenant name, it's private credit. It is a triple B S&P equivalent credit rating. Uh, and that was provided in the OM. And then the spec income discount rate, this value is not provided. Please specify your use a standard assumption. So they update our step four for us. And then as we look at step five, it recommends using that 8% discount, uh, spec income discount rate, that's fine. Uh, tenant details. So then we move to step six. I don't think there's a reason for us to have it change anything in step five. In step six, these are lease details pulled from the OM. And then let's say yeah, confirm lease option details. So here are our inputs. What we would want to do is we would review the OM to confirm that its reading is accurate. I've already done that because I built the case and so I can confirm that it is. Then it gets to residual assumptions. Now in this model, I use this concept of a residual where with a single tenant, there's some probability at the end of your analysis and oftentimes the analysis is, lines up with the, the term of the lease. And so the question is, will the tenant renew or not? And if it does not renew, there's going to be some retenanting costs and some downtime assumption. So here, Let's assume a 6.5% uh, exit cap. And the reason why is because we're, we will be assuming a new fresh lease at that stage. Let's assume $15 per square foot for retenanting. And yeah, six months downtime. Let's use a 75% renewal probability. 
and let's use 3% selling costs. So our last step, step seven, six and a half exit cap, some retenanting costs in the event that the tenant leaves at, at that stage. Then it summarizes all of our inputs for each of the sections. So property description, pricing, valuation, analysis, details, and project investment, operations and debt, tenant details, lease details, and then our residual assumptions. Finally, it asks, please confirm that all these inputs are correct and that you are ready for me to update the Excel file. Looks good. Please update the Excel file. So what it's now going to do is it has been trained on my single tenant net lease valuation model. And it knows which cells to change based on all of these inputs that we have provided it. It's changing those cells as we speak. And then it's going to feed back the file to us. We can open it up, edit it, and find the results of our analysis. So the Excel file has been successfully updated. It provides a download link that doesn't seem to have worked here. Um, we'll ask it. Download link isn't showing. Let's have it uh, feed us the download link again. Sometimes this happens, you just simply let it know. So there's the download link. And then again, it gives us these instructions, open the file, click enable editing, review the summary and input worksheets. Let's go ahead and download this file. We open it up, drag it over from my other screen. It first takes us to the versions tab. Here you can see I've updated the model a bit for this GPT had to make some changes to the model in order to accommodate a uh, AI model like this. But we come to the summary worksheet. Here you're gonna see these various inputs that we talked back and forth with it. We go to the inputs. Here we have the inputs from our analysis. And then you see investment returns now, the outputs. Levered IRR of seven and a half, six, six unlevered, here you've got a valuation. So this is valued based on a uh, different discount rates at 5.1 million. I think the asking price is 5.48 million. So uh, we, on a present value basis, we have actually valued this at about 300,000 less than the asking price. And then you have some of these uh, data backends. And this is now a working model. So we could, for instance, say, all right, Asking price is 5.48 million. Let's actually come and change the purchase price, what we actually pay for it, at 5.1. And now our returns, our result, resulting returns, a 7.7 7 unlevered IRR and a 10.6 levered multiple over a 10 year hold period. So that is our single tenant net lease valuation model custom GPT. Play around with it. it, it demonstrates the growing capacity for AI to assist us in our real estate analysis. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for your time.